Hey guys, this is Kevin over at jazzam.com. Jazzam.com is an online store that buys, sells, trades authentic luxury watches. We make these videos so our customers can easily choose the best watch for themselves in the comfort of their own home. We offer the lowest prices anywhere online, and if you want to know the price of the watch, simply click on the links in the description below. We would greatly appreciate it if you would buy a watch from jazzam.com once in a while. All right, so today we're going to be doing a review on the Rolex Seed Roller here on my left, recently released at the Basel World 2019 show. This is the two-tone Seed Roller, reference number 126603, versus the Rolex Submariner, reference number uh, 116, uh, sorry, 116610. We'll be going over the dial, bezel, case, crown, bracelet, clasp, and we'll talk about the movement towards the end of the video. All right, so jumping right into the dial, you can see that they basically have the same style dial, the maxi hour markers with the circular hour markers in the uh, rectangular six, nine, and triangular 12 o'clock position hour marker. Day one out the three o'clock position with a cyclops lens on top of that sapphire crystal for magnification, easier viewing of the date. The Mercedes hour hands and the uh, same style minute hand, just a long bar and minute hand with the uh, same style second hand with the small circular uh, it's a small circular tipping that rotates. But the fashioning of the fashioning of the hour markers and of the hands and hands themselves are different in terms of the, very, the gold they use. It's 18 karat white gold fashioning for the Submariner, 18 karat yellow gold as it is a two-tone yellow gold watch. So 18 karat yellow gold fashioned for the hour markers and the hands, 18 karat yellow gold for the Submariner. Besides that, the text at the six o'clock position, we still have four lines of text for, for both of these. Submariner goes with a standard white on that black contrasting background, whereas the Sea Dweller has opted to go with the glinted version. So you have a nice gold Sea Dweller name to match with the gold fashioning and just overall the gold in the watch. The water resistance is right below both uh, below each one, of course, in varying and varying depths. As a sea dweller is more uh, more suited to go even deeper in deep sea diving than the Submariner. Submariner, we're looking at a water resistance of 1,000 feet or 300 meters, uh, versus the sea dwellers, which is 4,000 feet or uh, 1,220 meters. And then we have the superlative officially uh, superlative chronometer officially certified at right below that at six o'clock position in reference to Rolex having a very precise movement, which we'll talk about later in the video. But besides that, even the text at the 12 o'clock position is the same with the Rolex crown logo with the Rolex or special date name there. Really, the only the only difference besides besides the glinting of the of the name versus just the plain white text name is at the six o'clock position we do have the Swiss made right underneath that rectangular arrow marker. Uh, the Sea Dweller, the Sea Dweller 43, has the updated version of the updated version of the movement. So you see this Rolex crown logo right between that Swiss made to indicate that this movement has been updated and upgraded. Whereas the Sea Dweller is running an older movement, but a very tried and tested movement. All right, so moving on to the bezel now. Both have a black ceramic bezel, nice glossy black ceramic bezel to match with a glossy black dial. Uh, numerations, are, numerations are pretty much the same in the 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 in the Arabic numerals with fatter indices uh, uh, indicating every five minute increments so five to the 15 to the 25. Uh, the only difference is that the railings for the seat holder does have more indices past the uh, 15, uh, rather the three o'clock position. So you still have these smaller indices continuing throughout the whole bezel, whereas the seat holder stops at that, or rather the submariner stops at the three o'clock position with the uh, small linear indices. But besides that, they both have the same functions functions of tracking elapsed time. I'm not going to go over that uh, exactly, but the bezels are unidirectional, meaning they only shift to one side and they do not shift to the other side um, due, to, uh, due to safety precautions. And you can see more about that in their own standalone videos. But we're going to go ahead and move on to the case sizing now. So the case sizing, we're looking at a 40 millimeter case size for the Submariner. So from my index finger to my thumb here, that's 40 millimeters in diameter. For the Sea Dweller, looking at 43 millimeters in diameter. So from my index finger to my thumb here, that's 43 millimeters in diameter. So three millimeter diameter difference. Actually, the previous models of the Sea Dweller back uh, before 2017 used to be a 40 millimeter, just like the um, just like the Submariner, but they've opted to update and up uh, to update and largen the sea dollars and now it's a 43 millimeter compared to this to the 40 now now let me show you the side profile of the case 
So from the side profile, you can see that the seat roller does have a larger case profile. So a little bit larger, but still slim enough that it will fit under suit cuffs, dress cuffs very nicely. And a Submariner, of course, just has very, very slim uh, profile due to just having just that the very simple, uh, very simple casing and movement as well. Specifically for the specifically for the seat roller, you can see and the sensor here it has a little helium escape valve, which is indicated by this little circular marker here. And the helium escape valve is used for professional uh, professional diving, where if you dive very uh, dive very deep into the depths of the ocean, you do have to come up into a depressurization chamber, which has a mixture of gases in that chamber. That chamber of gases does include helium. Uh, is one of the gases that can actually be small enough to fit into the watch. It'll actually, uh, uh, it'll actually find its way into the watch and pop the crystal uh, out when the pressure becomes too much. The helium escape valve, as Rolex ingeniously made, um, detects a certain bar pressure using a spring, and then once it reaches that certain bar pressure, the spring opens up, opens up the helium escape valve, and lets that helium out, therefore protecting your watch. So that's something to keep in mind if you do plan on doing any deep sea diving, you probably might want to go with the Sea Dollar than the Submariner, uh, whereas the Submariner probably provides just, I mean, provides more than enough water resistance for everyday wear. All right, so let me actually, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the crowns now. So the crowns, you can see 18 karat yellow gold crown on the seat roller with stainless steel on the Submariner. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you the functions of the crown on the seat roller because they actually both have the same crown functions. So we're gonna go ahead and open, open that up by opening that up clockwise, or rather counterclockwise. And then you, from this standard position that the crown opens up to, you can wind the watch about 15 to 20 winds is all you need to get it started once more. Pulling the crown out to the next position will allow you to adjust the date instantaneously. Let me just move that minute hand out of the way. And there we are. You can see that date window shift very easily, very quickly. All right, and pulling the crown out to the final position will allow you to adjust the hands bi-directionally, set the time however you like. Also stopping the seconds hand for precise time setting. Uh, so you can set the time exactly to the uh, seconds for something like an atomic clock online or your iPhone time. And then pressing the crown back in, we'll start that second hand once more. Press, always make sure to screw the crown nice and tight in against the case as you want to keep the watch water resistant. Once again, the 4,000 4, feet or 1,220 meters for the seat roller or 1,000 feet or 300 meters for the Submariner. Now let's go ahead and move on to the bracelet now. So the bracelets of these watches, they both run an oyster style bracelet. Uh, different polishing styles though, because the Sea Dweller is a two-tone style watch. It does have the yellow gold straight down the center and a nice high polish contrasted by the satin finish of the end of the uh, sides of the three-piece links, whereas this, whereas the Submariner is a full-on, uh, full-on durable sports piece. Um, it's not really a hybrid between a dress watch and a sports watch. We have that nice satin finish throughout the whole Oyster three-piece links. You can see that even travels all the way to the clasp. As we move on to the clasp side here, you can see the high polish still travels straight through the clasp, satin finish for the Submariner, and on to the other side of the bracelet. Same thing, nice high polish and satin finish. So we have the high polish down the center class of of the seat roller and then nice and finish on this class as well as we move on. Both of these run the safety folding oyster lock. We're gonna go ahead and open up that safety here. So this is a little safety onto that folding oyster. And there we are, nice high, this high polish class blade for the seat roller. The Submariner actually, this one that I'm comparing with the seat roller is actually an older, older model. So this is around the 2010 uh, as Rolex uh, round uh, Rolex actually converted to the high polish later on in the later models of this of the Submariner This instead used to be uh, This is the how the older version used to be with the sandblasted with the Rolex name embossed on there So if you're looking for something if you like the sandblasted look a little bit more then you can opt for an older version of the Submariner uh, believe around 2015 or 2016 is when they changed it to the high polish as you see here on the left but besides that, both of these do have the glide lock extension link, which I'll show you uh, behind the class here. So starting with the seat roller, pulling at a 45 degree angle, unlocks that glide lock. You can see the riveted edges, about two millimeter increments for a maximum of 20 millimeters. Easy to adjust, very quick to adjust. Um, of course, made in doubt with divers in mind as they put, do put on wetsuits. Um, you can account for the additional millimeter of adjustment from the wetsuit there. Same thing with the Submariner, you can see that same glide lock, 45 degree angle, pull that out, and you can adjust that very quickly, very easily. All right, 
And there we are, very simple and easy to use. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the movement now. I just wanna show you the case backs real quick. So here are the case backs of the watches. You can see the seat roller name has the uh, Rolex seat roller original name embossed onto the high polish there. Uh, but it's relatively the same style case backing with the Oyster style case backing. I'm going to start with the Submariner's movement uh, first because like I said, the seat roller's movement was updated, was an updated movement. So we want to talk about the old one before we move on to the new one. Um, so the Rolex, the Rolex Submariner, the 116610 runs a, um, runs a 3135 movement. It's a tried and tested movement that Rolex has used in their sports pieces for over 20 plus years. And it's a very tried and tested movement. It's in within twist specs of the minus two plus two seconds a day. It's a perpetual mechanical self-winding movement. Has, uh, I believe this one does have the blue paracomb hairspring. Uh, I might be wrong on that uh, for, the, uh, for the help with the oscillator. Uh, but the power reserve of this watch is a 48-hour 48 48 power reserve, meaning this watch can be put down on a Friday evening, picked back up on a uh, Sunday afternoon, and be keeping time just fine. So the changes that they've done from the 31, the 3135 to this one, the seat roll is 3235, is that they've updated it with more in-house made parts rather than um, rather than using other other brands' parts. So the same thing for pretty much most of the specs or you're looking at a perpetual mechanical self-winding movement within the source specs of minus two plus two seconds seconds a day functioning of the hour minute and second hand with each instantaneous changing of the date stopping a second hand for precise time setting as i've shown you what the crown functions but the uh the shock absorbers the 3135 used to use the KIF shock absorbers, which were the industry standard. The 3235 now uses this Rolex in-house made shock absorbers called the Paraflex shock absorbers. The escapement is also changed as well. Uh, for the 3235, it uses in Rolex's in-house made Chronogy escapement, which is a skeletonized uh, escapement wheel made out of a nickel phosphorus. And the skeletonization helps with the reduction of inertia, so it keep, helps keep that precise time setting of the minus two plus two seconds a day. It also helps with energy efficiency moving the power reserve of this watch to a beyond the 48 hour power reserve of the older movement it's now a 70 hour power reserve so you can put this watch out on a friday evening pick it back up on a monday afternoon and be keeping time just fine so with the with the current is going to be made out of the nickel phosphorus the nickel phosphorus helps with uh, additional resist resistance against magnetism paired with the blue pair uh, paramagnetic blue paracomb hairspring uh, with that, so very uh, a little bit higher resistance against magnetism in the newer style of movement. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the final part. I'm going to try these watches on on my wrist now. So we're going to go ahead and open up that safety folding oyster lock, folding down, safety on, and there we are. There is the sea dollar in a two tone yellow gold. I did forget to mention that the Submariner is actually in the two tone yellow gold as well. You can actually purchase that one as a 116613. But you know, sometimes a 40 millimeter doesn't do it for some people and it's a little bit too small. So this is a nice step up from that. The nice, you keep that nice two tone yellow gold with a high polish that contrasts from the sand finish. But you also get that nice pop from the gold uh, with the gold fashion around the hour markers popping nice, very nicely against the background of the glossy black dial but also the size of 43 millimeters it feels more comfortable on some people's wrists and that's uh, definitely an option there now for the submariner the submariner is just you know plain jane submariner this is the uh, go-to watch for everyday everyday wear it's good it's good against it's good against scratches that satin finish just is absolutely gorgeous as well and it's just a very very simple watch just a black dial with the contrasting white hour markers and and hands with the mercedes hand being in the white as well the nice black ceramic bezel it's just a very very simple watch if you just want to go about your day so there's those two watches side by side. If you like this video or any or any of our videos, please like, comment, subscribe below. And if you're interested in any of these watches, uh, check out our website at jazzham.com. We offer a one year warranty. All right, thanks for watching guys. Hope to see you guys soon. If you want to find out more about the watch you just saw in the video, you can just click below on show more to see the full description. Then you can check the link next to model as seen in video, click on it and you will get to the proper page where you can see all the details. If you're watching on a mobile phone, you have to click on the arrow down on the right hand side below the video to see the full description. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to share this video with your friends, you can use the share button below 
and share it on any platform you like. If you have questions, constructive feedback, want to tell us about some mistakes or misspeaks, just write a comment below. If you want to see more videos like this, you should subscribe to our channel and visit our channel page where you can find all the videos. And if you're interested in a specific watch brand, you can check out our playlists. If you want to check the price for a watch or want to buy one, remember at jazztime.com you always get a steep discount. So you should check the prices with us. If you want to know the price for a specific watch, just go to Google, type in Jazz Time, plus the brand, model, and the details you're interested in, and Google will find the right page for you. Thank you for watching.